What's going on, tribe? This is Ronnie Lee, the Naked Medium, and you know, things are busy over here. So I figured I'd record a podcast because it's been a while since we went down the rabbit hole. Y'all know I got a busy mind, okay? So we never know what's going to happen day to day. So um, my reason, let me see the topic that I want to address. When we did have a live, I sent out a question. Actually, this was after the live. I, I posted this question on my YouTube page of why were you awakened? And my intention behind that was for you to question, yeah, why was I awakened? Um, what is the purpose, the bigger picture behind it all? And of course, we've explored so many reasons. A lot of us feel we just know. Many of us are open to the fact that we know so much, but there's more to it that we haven't yet discovered. Um, so I kind of wanted to get in into that because I also want to, from there, go into this is the time to prepare. And without causing anyone to feel so anxious about, oh, I need to hurry up and get things together. But we've spoken about this so many times on this channel. And I believe my true tribe has already taken steps in preparation for anyone new. This is an ongoing thing that we've kind of discussed. But I don't believe I have before in this way broken down why we were awakened. Like I wanted to, you all know me, I love to break things down to make it more clear, to make it more simplistic so that we can really ask the appropriate questions to ourselves, to our our own, you know, tribes within our family and to open up discussion here on this channel. So one of the things um, I actually wrote down, I have some notes of things that I've written down of why we have been awakened. And if you have not already read my book, The Awakening, A Guide for Those That Carry the Light, it goes into more detail about why we are awakened. But right here, I just want to discuss, to discuss these things that I've written down. Um, of course, this is in everything. So in the comment section below, go ahead and add your input. There's also some other things I'm going to ask you to add in the comment section. So make sure to listen this all the way through. So in order for us to really get to the core and to hit walls that cause us to ask questions so these walls can come breaking down, is let's track the benefits of our awakening so that we can find some more answers. So what I mean by that is if you follow me here on YouTube, you can look at my videos and you can put it all together, get a glimpse of my personality and see what my intention and purpose is behind my YouTube channel for you and your own personal life. Someone can look at what you do for a living, how much time and energy you put into that or your family or your personal life and see what your intention is and how your thoughts are, how your emotions are, because we physically act out what we're feeling inside. Okay, so there's always this trail from the now to the, the, the prior, the past, the what started it all. So I wanted to track some of the benefits of our awakening so we can get closer to more answers on why we have been awakened. And not just because like you don't know, because you know, you know why you've been awakened. You've at least danced around with many theories of why, but it can go deeper. And that's the whole thing with the rabbit hole. Let's just go, let's take it a little deeper. So I encourage you even after this to take these questions and this thought into meditation and really think about it. And then Look at the way you're living right now versus what you have been finding out by meditating on this and what um, contradictions, what, what shaping up needs to occur. And not just with you, heck, with me, myself, you know, like this is a process, but I believe that we fight against going back to sleep. So I like to have these topics and these discussions to keep us on our toes. So one of the starting off, um, the benefits of our awakening was, of course, our third eye opening. Now, to break this down even more, the wake up was from those mental chains. It woke us up from those mental chains that were there that were binding us. Those mental chains opened, okay, which opened, you know, going side to side with our third eye. Things started to open up. The programming began to be exposed. 
the ability to rewire our own programming, just to even see the programming, that in itself, see the bigger picture of the programming, mental, physical, and emotional slavery is what we discovered we were in. And although there have been glimpses of openings from the time we were younger till now, there has been a large exposure of why we were programmed. Once our eyes started to open up, once those chains begin to open, we begin to see more. Um, it was a spell. You know, those chains were broke so we could walk away from what was binding us. We were put under a spell. Getting later into who, who did the spell, but we were put under a spell. And the time came where the spell began to wear off. And I believe that the systems, the satanic families that put us under a spell in the first damn place are fighting to get us back under it. The time has come. They, we've, we've broken the spell. The spell was broken and now they're losing control. And it's very clear looking out into the world how much control they're actually losing. Because what happens when you're um, when there's a narcissistic partner that is emotionally, physically, mentally, financially abusive to their partner, when their partner starts to hang out with friends that, you know, may may have a healthy relationship themselves or a healthy mind, the narcissist gets kind of paranoid. It's like, oh, shit, I got to hurry up and will my partner back so they don't get too much exposure of freedom and it start to rattle and unravel what spell I've put them under. And that's what these families that put us under a spell are doing right now. They see, oh, the spell has worn off. It is damage control. Like we need to regain control. And you can see that in almost every aspect, just looking out where they are trying to regain control. Now, the another thing that I have um, written down aside from the programming spell being broken, we have the light shining on the evil that put us under the spell in the first damn place. This is the exposure of the darkness behind the spell. We've got just to name a few, <laughs> like literally just to name a few, the Rockefellers, Carnegie's, the Rothschilds, the Fords, the DuPonts. The Onassis, the Warburg, the Oppenheimers, to say the least, just those families dominate. They own and dominate just these, just those families, like they own and dominate so much. But let's just look at the basic. Let's look at the, the major, the, the ones that stick out the most. Just those families that I've just mentioned dominate agriculture, education banking, the medical industry, trading, politics, government, the media, the religion. Look how many religions that are dominated by these families. So in seeing what, like I said, tracing things back and seeing what just these families are attached to and what they're putting out, you can tell, okay, so part of that spell was coming from this in order to do that. So if they're dominating agriculture and education and the banking, they're all in it. There's a spell in all of those sectors. There's, there's, there's an agenda behind all of it. There is an agenda built behind all of these sources. Every last one that I've mentioned, there is an agenda from the satanic families that they are attached to where they are targeting us. They are attacking us with those weapons. Those are their weapons and they have been attacking us. So going back, the spell being broken opened our eyes to not just the person, the people, the families that created the spell, but we're also being exposed to the tools that they've used in their spell to keep us under the spell, in the zombie, the zombie space, in those chains. See, their ties to all these industries expose their work. It's like a witch without an invisible cloak that just casts a spell on the whole world. And 
she got so cocky about it. She was like, I don't even, I don't even need to do an invisible spell for me. She's walking around freely or they, let me just put it as it is. Those families are walking around freely, extremely confident that you will do nothing to escape their grips because the spell has been broken. But see, they are on damage control. And if we are not careful, I've said this so many times, I'll continue to say it until it just it's etched in everyone's brain. If we are not careful, we will go back to sleep or we will get lazy and comfortable. And this is how things go. It's like it's Um, everything that's going on in the world right now, watching it unravel, watching things fall apart. It's like labor pains. Okay. So you have contractions and it's, it's, it's bad. It's like, just kill me because this is, this is, there's no way. But in between those contractions, you get a break. And the only thing you think about during that break is the rest and the fact that the pain has stopped. You don't really get into survival. I got to follow this all the way through until there is no other option when it's time to push. And I believe with things that are happening in our country and in our world, there's tragedy will strike. That's the contraction. But then people go get comfortable again. And instead of continuing to prepare, continuing to Keep your eyes open and stay on your toes so that you don't fall asleep. There's a level of comfort that keeps coming. It's I keep in between those contractions. I'm going to sleep. I'm trying to get comfortable. When that big push comes, if you're not prepared and there's no such thing as being 100 percent completely prepared. We're all going to feel the remnants of these tragedies, these tragedies that strike in some form or fashion. But it's lowering and um, raising the percentage kind of like thing. I can lower my percentage of this and that if I'm if I'm a little bit more prepared, if I'm staying on my toes. Unfortunately, we we got to kind of be in a constant flight mode. This is birth. These are labor pains. We can't be in, you just can't sit there and do nothing. You gotta, you gotta keep going. You gotta fight this way through. You cannot put yourself back to sleep because the spell has been broken. The tools that are used to put you to sleep that were used to put you to sleep in the first place are going extreme so that you can be put back to sleep. Um, let me go to some other um, benefits. Okay. So the ability will actually scratch at the freedom to be self-sufficient and to disconnect from the dark sources. So that's another benefit of us awakening. And under their, under their power, there is a, a lack of freedom. Definitely. Definitely. But you that have been awakened know that there are things about you, be it your intuition, the skills that you've gained, insight that gives you more freedom than the average person. So always grateful, always. I'm always grateful and I suggest you always be grateful for that. Because remember, there are people out there that have been under this spell so long, they can't even come out of it. Their spirit is fighting hard but they continue the programming and they just keep getting put right back under under the spell. So this freedom to be self-sufficient and disconnect from the dark sources, easier said than done, but obtainable. And it comes step by step, bit by bit. This is getting off of the conveyor belt, learning new ways to live, creating a new path, seeing truths that can lead somewhere other than this damn trap. And again, this isn't, you know, realistically, you don't wake up from the spell and some people do. And my hat, I tip my hat off if I wore one to them, honey. Some people wake up from the spell and just say, fuck this. I'm moving in the woods today. Unmarked territory. Ain't nobody going to know. I'm getting rid of my phone, everything. (laughs) We all have grandparents that that fit that. But um, somebody in the family that fits that. 
So our journey of being more self-sufficient and disconnecting from these dark sources may be step by step, but it's better to continue step by step than to stay on that conveyor belt and just follow behind like a little robot and handing over your freedom. You're still in a spell where you are binded up. You've got to look at this for what it is. This is a spell that you have been under. And not disconnecting yourself from these forces, from these families and their tools, their their um, the rituals is putting you back into their hands. Another benefit of us away of our awakening is creating our own way. So we see the tools that they have created to keep us bound. But because we've awakened, what's been happening since you've been awakened? Like real talk, you've been looking at your food differently. No matter what category you put yourself in, you're more like reading labels, doing research, wanting things to be more simple with what you put in your body. You're looking at the education system differently. I mean, it. Whew, some days homeschooling is absolutely beautiful. And other days, I, I just I want to push them back into the school. Like, I just want to be like, here, like, go ahead and program them. I need a break. But my spirit won't let me. <laughs> and um, I'm, I'm just keeping it real. It's it's not the easiest thing, but it's so rewarding because we can, where we can gain control, we should gain control. So if it's the way we eat, if it's the educational system, when we see, when we see those satanic bloodlines, in that system and we keep playing by their rules with no intentions to change, no step moving forward to change. We're choosing to be put back under a spell. We're okaying the things that they do. So if you can gain control over your own health by eating healthier, using natural things to as a preventative measure, Like you can't be woke just eating corn syrup, half fructose corn syrup every day, eating shit you can't even pronounce. That shit ain't cute, man. Like what, like what, what are we doing? Right now you have the ability to create some freedom. It's, it's got to start with something. You can control some of the agriculture. You can sit there and say, I got a little yard. Let me grow something. It doesn't even matter if you don't have a hundred acres and you got enough food and, and, um, you know, enough vegetables and fruit and animals that you can feed a whole neighborhood. It's not even about that. It's about, let me take one step forward towards my freedom, even though it may not look like a big step. It's a step outside of the circle where that spell has been casted. So taking over your finances, understanding that the media is a major tool that is being used to put you back to sleep. So you back it up some, you back it up until, until you're done. Not everybody that gets off of drugs goes cold turkey. It's a weaning process. When you become healthier, you wean yourself over to a different type of lifestyle, a healthier lifestyle. There's baby steps involved. But if you're not taking no step at all, the ignorance is disgusting. To just say, let me keep going along with the system that I know is hindering me, my children, my community. Let me just keep going with it. Let me find a way to laugh it off and say, oh, the ignorance. There's some conversations what I have with people and their ignorance just makes me, oh, I just want to open up a hole in the earth and put them in it. I know it seems kind of aggressive, but we can't keep playing these games. Where we can gain control, we need to work towards that. They're controlling religion. We got spirituality. We have our own personal connection and relationship with our creator that we can access through prayer, through meditation, through journaling through just sitting still. We don't need no outside forces. And to even just elaborate on that for a moment, 
I kind of spoke about this on a video that I had put up um, a few weeks back when it comes to our beliefs. When, when we're creating um, our own way and we're moving away from the spell, we are awakening from the spell, you got to, when I say be careful not to go back to sleep, you have to pay attention to see if they put you to sleep at one point, the next phase of trying to get you back to sleep, they need to step it up. So it's going to have to be even more disguised. OK, so right now you got. When when OK, when we're trying to create our own way, you've awakened, it's like, OK, I want to eat healthier. I want to stop doing this, this and that, because I see that all that stuff was a part of their game to put me under. So when they get smarter and they get more creative, it's looking the way it does right now. A million people that are saying this is the way you should worship God. This is the religion that you should do. This is this and this and that. And here we go putting ourselves back into their boxes again and causing more division. Because if it's going to cause more division, we got to question it. So now we got people that believe this, 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 and that. And that's fine to have all these different beliefs, but you've got to be mindful of when I am here, am I causing more division? When I am here, do I feel a sense of pressure? Because a lot of the systems that we're forming is piggybacking off of those that put us to sleep. I'm all for eating healthy. But there is an agenda behind this vegan, this veganism. There's a full ass agenda behind turning people into being vegan. Follow what Bill Gates has been doing. Just open your eyes and look at all the marketing around vegan products, around fake meat. It's still an agenda. They've just gotten creative. I mean, to keep it real, the purest food we're going to probably get is the shit that we are growing ourselves. But that's what I mean when I say don't go back to sleep. You cannot think that the people that cast a spell so powerful that your ancestors were under the same spell. And here you are still just climbing out of it. We're not creative and intelligent enough to switch it up and get you back in their grips. You've got to use your third eye. You got to sit back. Don't be so in shit. Sit back. Oh, so you felt, okay, I'm going vegan. This is what I'm supposed to do, blah, 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 blah. And that may be very well what you are supposed to do, what your body is calling you to do. But sit back and understand that they don't just allow shit to happen. If, if, if what you are concocting is going to ruin their plan, they're going to jump in there. So you've got to be smarter about it. There's an agenda. There's an agenda behind everything that they're freely allowing in your presence. You have to question everything. And I would say to play it safe, simplicity is the best thing that we can do. Continue going towards simplicity and go the opposite damn direction than any of the marketing they've got out there. Any questions about this, just put it down in the comment section. Like, let's just have a whole ass discussion with each other amongst each other. Um, another benefit that I want to go to is the time to prepare for the collapse. We see things collapsing. Also, we see the collapsing of one system and the building up of another system. We see, you know, I mean, the AI has been here, but it's, it's about to be on a different level. Now, how far right do we go? How far back into the spell do we go? Because what they're doing is creating another spell. The first one has fallen apart. It has served its time, but they couldn't create another one until that was complete. So here they are creating another spell because every spell has a season. Every spell has a season. Here they are creating another spell for us to go up under. So now we've got the AIs. We have the 5G. We have constant monitoring. What are all three of these things? What do all three of these things have in common? Our brain. 
They knew that our mind was so powerful and that our connection with spirit was so powerful that together it broke the first spell. So they knew that that was coming though. That's why they've been working on this. That's why AIs have been out because they knew, damn, their minds are breaking through the spell. So that's where we got to target. We have to put all of our energy on tar targeting their mind. I told y'all before that I'm a certified hypnotherapist and that I've done so much research and time studying the brain and the way it works. And it is fucking amazing. And when you take the time to research the way your brain works, everything that they are doing to you becomes so fucking clear. It's the music that you just can't turn off because you feel it in your spirit. You don't think they knew that that music was putting your ancestors under a trance to connect with their ancestors? They're not dumb. They just found another way to get you hooked to their shit. Down to the food that tastes so good that you think you need. They've made addicts out of everyone. And that's why it's challenging getting from underneath the spell because you can't just tell a heroin addict, stop that shit, stop it, get off of that. You can't just, do, and if, if it was that easy, they'd be off of it. So when it comes to, back to what I was saying about the, the, the preparing for this collapse, don't even ask your, don't even say like, oh, um, or ask yourself, is, is, is there going to be a collapse? Is there going to be more to come? Maybe this is enough because you got to still be sleep asking yourself that. You got to, you know, it's coming. You know that there is different systems at play right now. There's a whole other spell that is being cast, that has been cast. And it's just a matter of time before people go back into it. Winston Churchill said, the one who cannot see that on earth, a big endeavor is taking place, an important plan on which realization we are allowed to collaborate as faithful servants certainly has to be blind. This is slavery. They seen that shit work good. They seen it work. They, they played it out amongst different people. They played it out in different cultures. It's slavery. They said, oh shit, it works so fucking good. Let's do this shit to everybody. And our dumb asses are sitting here still fighting each other over skin color and culture. Understand that we are strong in numbers. And I know everybody wants to stay true and connected to their ancestors. But if we look at the past, you got to study where everybody went wrong. Division. Having people in your crew, in your group that didn't have the same belief system as you. Conscious people. You can't trust people that are not conscious, period. Their mind is still under a spell. You can keep feeding them the truth until it finally clicks, until, until you can get them out of the spell. But you can't trust them with what you believe and with what you're trying to do. If they're still under a spell, they will compromise everything that you are doing. Why we also got to be careful when we're doing rituals and discussing certain things online. Because you have unconscious people that are there, that are watching, that are listening, I know. That will then make it their agenda to rewrite everything that you're doing or to get inside and in between what you're trying to create. Social media just, it's an overshare. These motherfuckers wasn't sitting out there like, oh, let me get on social media and tell everybody how I'm about to brainwash them. Oh, let me get on social media and tell them how I'm poisoning their dinner. What the fuck? No, they were shutting up. They had their own system. They had stuff underground. Secret societies. Hell, they were smart enough to have a secret society. We putting all our shit on social media. And I know it's been a way for us to gather and find each other. But now we got to get smarter and create something differently. And I know I'm going I'm going to the time to prepare for the collapse. I know I went left for a minute there, but that was important for me to say. 
Don't get comfortable in between these contractions. Here's some questions that I want to ask, but when I'm asking you these questions, I don't want you to just hear me. I want you to hear me. I want you to ask yourself these questions, whether you got to pause after them, you know, pause the video, whatever. Ask yourself these questions and then answer them. And we don't got time to play victim because let's be honest, nobody's going to give a fuck about us sitting in the middle of the street crying about I didn't know what, what to do or how nobody cares. OK, if you haven't realized nothing's coming to save us, but we've been given the tools and the power to save ourselves. There's got to put that shit together. Here's the question that I want to ask. What happens when the medical facilities are not easily accessible? For you, for your family. All right. Now, in the past. They, there were libraries that used to be burned. Books used to be burned. There were so many sacred books that were burned. Libraries that were burned that held so much sacred knowledge and wisdom. Destroyed. And what was not destroyed was hidden from us. But right now, you, you have the ability to have some information. When we discussed in my Goddess Realm group a few years back about preparing for things, we got books, okay? Like, you might not know what to do in the middle of a, a disaster, but what happens when you, you don't have the resources? But you could have had a book that you could tuck away and kind of like, uh, all right, this is what to do in an emergency situation, just to up our, up our ante, up our chances of survival. But what happens when medical facilities are not easily accessible anymore? And in many cases, they're not. What happens when you have to sign away your freedom to just be educated? Are we not facing that right now? How many schools right now are already in the works of discussing these children have to be vaccinated with this COVID vaccine before they can get back to school? Whether you agree with it or not, you do understand that this is your freedom that's being taken away. But, but. They can say that because that's their school. That's their form of programming, but they got you so hooked on that drug that you can't even see the route to freedom. So what happens? Because a lot of people are talking shit. A lot of people are saying, oh, I'm not getting my kids that vaccination. A lot of um, people are saying, I'm not getting vaccinated. Whether you want to do it or not, I'm not, I place no judgment on that. I'm a very understanding person and I know what the brain has to fight in order to take a different route. So I have no judgment on that. You do what you want to do. But what I'm saying is there's a lot of people talking shit, saying they're not going to do this. They're not going to do that. But the second they start saying, well, you're not going to be able to come to work. You're not going to be able to do this. I guarantee everybody's in that line. So what happens when you have to sign away your freedom to be educated or go to work? What happens when your food source is compromised? We already know that it is. It just takes more awareness of what chemicals am I actually eating? What is it causing? Just keep, go down a rabbit hole. Your food source has been compromised, but, but yet I ask you this question. And for you to sit in silence and answer it yourself, what happens when my food source is compromised? By now you're realizing that we have way too much dependence on the people that put us under the spell in the first damn place. What happens when you can no longer afford your housing costs? What happens? What do you do when you can no longer afford your rent, your mortgage? What happens if you choose not to get the vaccine, you can't go back to work, and then you can't live in that house? Very important questions because it's going to let you know what side of the fence you really want to be on. What happens when disaster strikes your community? Because for a lot of people, you're seeing it on television. You're seeing it happen in different areas. But what happens when that shit hits home? You cannot not think that. You've got to ask that question. That will let you know, am I prepared for anything in this moment? Men. Are you prepared to take care of your families if disaster strikes right now? Because all eyes are going to be on you.
we all going to be looking at each other. But if disaster strikes right now, is there any preparation? I guarantee with everything going on in the world where disaster has, let's even just say with Texas, with what just happened there. Meditating on these questions, I wonder if if that question was posed and that person and people were meditating on that question two months ago, how many more people would have been prepared for what happened? We are not far from that. We cannot sit here entitled with an entitled mentality to think that's not going to happen to anybody else. It's not going to happen in our community. What kind of delusional state could you possibly be in to think that? I'll answer. The mind is still coming down off of that spell and that programming. So the deep question is, are you going to dare trust and have faith in the evil system built by these satanic families to look out for you? That's like going to the person, and I don't mean to be so graphic and aggressive, but this, I, but I, but I yet mean to. It's like going to a person that raped and beat you close to death and then ask them for a ride back to their house so you can clean yourself up and get fed and then take a nap. That's what it sounds like. That's how intense this is. If we're not actively working on divorcing ourselves from this system, and I know, I got common damn sense, this shit don't happen overnight. But if we're not actively working on divorcing ourselves from this system, then we are actively and consciously asking to be put back under the spell. And it's okay if you want to be put back under the spell. But draw your line in the fence. Draw your line. Draw your line. You're on the left side of the fence. You're on the right side of the fence. It says in the Bible, there comes a time where you can no longer be lukewarm. You can't sit there and be like, I'm cool right where I'm at. I'm going to straddle the fence, see where it rocks, and then hurry up and pick a side. You can't do that shit. And if you haven't realized that by now, you're going to learn the hard way. We all have to pick a side. I'm talking to you and me. There's no more straddling the fence. We have to aggressively choose where we're going to be. There were many slaves that were free. They didn't all run away. They stayed close out of fear of their enemy and the unknown, what was out there. But fuck that shit. At some point, we got to jump. Or else our great, great grandchildren are going to be having the same damn discussion. But we could be the ones that set it off for them. In the comment section, I want to know, let's say that we hypothetically, look at this scenario. We had our own community. We did this in the goddess realm. I didn't like the platform of Facebook. I was feeling some weird stuff and we had some weird people coming in. I'm trying to be on some awaken, let's, let's, let's make a change shit and people just want to, oh my God, I give you a free reading, free readings. Let me look at your aura. Like I wasn't on that shit, so I had to get, get rid of it. But we had a good thing going on. The true people had a good thing going on. So I want to invite that into this space right here. In the comment section, let's say we started our own community. What could you bring to the table? And it doesn't have to be this elaborate list. It ain't got to be what you think other people might deem as, oh, my God, that's so uniquely special. What natural skills do you possess? What skills have you learned, have you gained through your time on Earth here that would contribute to a community. Drop all that below. I would love to see it. I would love to see it. As I search for a platform for our true tribe members that have been subscribed all these years, that want to have more in-depth conversations, it seems like when I find one platform, I find something else I don't like out about it. So any suggestions, I'm open to that, as a matter of fact. So you can put those suggestions below. But um, let's get the discussion rolling. Let's really talk in this comment section below amongst each other. And for all of you creeping, join the conversation. I'll see you later. This is Ronnie Lee.